Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending February 26th, 2023. And no, I didn't check, just check the date. Uh, <laughs> let's start with some weird anime news, shall we? You know, The weird, the better. Exactly. So we're going to start off with um, uh, Kanakawa Media Label's first work, uh, Sexy ASMR. Because oh, oh, oh my. Indeed. Uh, Kanakawa launched a brand new label for audio media this week. And what better way to kick off a new media label than with some sultry anime girl ASMR. The label's first product is a special ASMR recording featuring Roxanne from Harem in the Labyrinth of Another World and adds an original scene to Roxanne's first night with the anime's protagonist. Oh, oh. No, the contents aren't quite what you're thinking of. The tension will include ASMR classics like hair tending and ear cleaning, though the ear cleaning will take place in Roxanne's lap, as well as an oil massage Ooh. and some pillow talk. But, and we're supposed to go to sleep to this? <laughs> I don't know. Apparently. I, you know, I mean, um, I'm, I I find myself falling asleep on the couch when I have like the Arctic wind thing going. Doctor, and I was just yes. like, within 10 seconds, like, <clears throat> this I'm just going to be like, why? Uh, I'll be up until like 6 a.m. in the morning and the alarm will go off. You have to be at work in 10 minutes. But, but, yeah, so but, but, but sexy anime girl. Yeah. <laughs> Ear cleaning, oil. No. Um, <laughs> of course, there's merch. <laughs> of course, um, there is. <laughs> along with the physical and digital releases, a special luxury hugging pillow. I um, knew it. I this knew illustration it. will be on sale. Oh, God. <laughs> So you can literally be in her lap. Well, oh, not God. quite. I'll be I'll be like that guy at Gen Con. I'm, I'm getting it for my daughter. Now the question is like, is it just a pillow or does it have like raised areas? Oh, it, you think it would have to with this kind of a character? Just asking. <laughs> I mean, I, think, some... I mean, the physics are all so wrong. On yeah, this. I mean, I, I think you would need three hugging pillows for this yes. particular one. <laughs> Uh, moving on, moving on. <laughs> moving right along. Um, Bandai Namco is opening an arcade at the site of an arcade. Uh, okay. Wow. So arcade number four of Gigo, which is formerly Sega in Akihabara, closed back in September right. after the expiration of its contract because of uh, um, declining occupancy, COVID, um, several other Sega arcades closed. Yeah. But... The building will not remain unused. Uh, Bandai, Bandai Namco has decided it's the perfect spot for an arcade. Uh, it's such a unique idea. No. Uh, Bandai Namco Amusement revealed this week they'll open a new arcade in the building called Namco Akihabara 10 on March 1st, which is like in a couple of days. Wow. Um, the company operates more than... How many arcades do you think they operate in Japan? Because okay. this blew me away. Oh, uh, I, I can't even begin to guess. Um, uh, uh, 80. Over 230. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it works. For them, it works. Exactly. I mean, my guess would have been 80. Yeah. Um, uh, but this this new uh, 11,000 square foot, six floor facility <clears throat> uh, oh, will be their first arcade in Akihabara. So, cool. Wow. Nice. Should be fun. I, you know, there are times when I'm just kind of like outside of my window. I look at Baltimore and I go, why can't we have something like that? And then I realize <laughs> I answered my own question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moving on to some end announcements. Mm -hmm. A um, couple of them this week. Uh, Yu Morikawa's Mr. Villain's Day Off manga revealed an upcoming TV anime adaptation this week. The story is, of course, about Mr. Villain a general from another planet whose evil organization is trying to take over Earth. He fights tirelessly against Earth's defenders every day, except on his one day off. Wow. What does he do? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming... He plays He plays in arcades? Nemco, yeah, exactly, arcades. yes. Yeah. And uh, uses a body pillow. And, um, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm assuming hijinks ensue. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm curious if this would be like a full anime series. Like this feels like something that would be like a 10, 15 minute episode kind of a thing. Yeah. I can't see this being like a, gosh, I can't even really see this being more than like a two shot OVA, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there are, you know, subordinates that come get involved and things like that. So, yeah. 
<laughs> they'll, they'll figure out something. Um, it's but... the one day of the year he can have a date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, with a sexy body color. That, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Kodansha has announced an upcoming TV anime for Funa's I Shall Survive Using Potions light novel oh. series sometime this year premiere uh, Fantasy Isekai sees main character Kaoru accidentally stuck in a different world by the powers that be so as retribution she requests the ability to create any potion the power to speak any language and the body she had back when she was 15 oh, well okay yeah. So I mean, here's the th- I mean, I like that in my body when I was 15. Well, back, that's the thing. Know? Like, I, I, you know, of all the times in my life, I got to say, 15 was not my ideal body. No, that's body. true. I, 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 20. We'll go exactly. With 20. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with 20. I was actually, there? once upon a time when I was playing sports, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not quite sure what was going on. Maybe there's the whole, you know, Adolescence is the great flowering of youth, or something. But uh, uh, you know, the more that you say something like that, I'm like going. I remember now what was 15 was like, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Let's not revisit that. <laughs> exactly. So very odd. It looks like a, a fiery protagonist. Yeah. So looking forward to it. it looks like it's she's fun. got tood. She's got, she's got tood all the tood. Yeah. Speaking of Tude, uh, One Punch Man illustrator Yusuke Murata has teased an anime project. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So we got the the, the monkey god thing? Mm-hmm. We got a, we got a monk. A very stylish monk, I should True. add. Yes. Um, a kappa mm-hmm. um, who looks like... I, I have no idea what to, what to go with that. but <laughs> And then, wow. <clears throat> Body pillow. Um, Body pillow. A female with a character, gun. I think. I think, yeah. So you think, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm guessing that's a female character. Not I, sure. Not you know. I need mm. to see more I, than I've, that. I've been, I've been looking very closely for a long yes. time at this illustration to tell, but uh, uh, yes, know, perhaps, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Good <laughs> yeah. lord! As, as we were saying beforehand, uh, this is Journey to the West, and. Uh, Oolong has had an upgrade. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, when Yusuke Murata wasn't busy drawing One Punch Man, he's busy setting up his own anime studio. And this week he shared teaser drawings and character sheets for their first project, titled Zayuki. The original work is based on the classic Journey to the West story and follows a kappa boy thrust into adventure after a treasure hunter comes along. I mean, she's got tan lines. She she does yes well she's and we're gonna have that animated wow. uh huh okay. now okay. to be clear um you know he set up his own um anime studio I do not have any indications here I I'm not gonna show you the character designs <laughs> for her because um you get me kicked off of YouTube um. Uh, no idea if it's going to be released in full, how long it's going to be, all that kind of stuff, a level of quality. Um, you know, is this going to be an OVA? Is it going right. to be, you know, 15 minutes long? Or like, you know, he's he's managed to do something longer. I don't know. I'm hoping, frankly, it's short. Um, yeah. Because I think the smart thing to do is say, I'm going to do, a, you know, I'm going to kind of blow everyone away with something nice and short and sweet and move on. Like a like a six episode OVA or something like that, maybe. Mm, yeah. But um, um, but you know, because I already see a character that can do like a spirit bomb and take five mm-hmm. episodes. <laughs> no, actually, he doesn't do that. do that. No, he's he's very. I mean, you it, if you're not familiar with One Punch Man, I mean that he's mm-hmm. it's very actiony. It's very yeah. showing in. So this mm-hmm. this will be this will this will not. Be intellectual on the on the on the <laughs> level of uh, Ghost in the Shell, shall we say? I, I doubt that very yes. much. Yes, um, yeah, I think this will be very much Dragon Ball esque. Yes, um, definitely feels that way. But again, please no spirit balls. Yeah, um, Murata san. Um, moving on to some more normal everyday anime news. Uh, G Kids has acquired uh, the Ten Years with Hayao Miyazaki documentary. Um, this is the 2019 documentary series, four parts, giving an exclusive behind-the-scenes look 
into Miyazaki during the creation of Ponyo. Oh, wow. Um, the documentary filmmaker Kaku Arakawa also directed the Neverending Man TV documentary uh, and was allowed to shadow Miyazaki in films from this process in conceiving and creating the movie. So to be clear, this is not Kingdom of Dreams and Madness, um, which was a, I think, a female film director. Um, right. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't know kind of the tone this is going to take, how in depth it's going to get. <laughs> He's a madman. <laughs> don't let him near Chainsaw and Children. <laughs> bad, bad. No. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, a four part documentary, that sounds pretty extensive. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and do you this think is Miyazaki brushing his teeth? Yeah, uh... <laughs> exactly. Like, do you think we'll learn anything new? I wonder. At this point, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, granted, Ponyo is one of Miyazaki's most kind of obtuse films in terms of yeah. like having lots of weird little references in there that we know he threw in just for for the lols. Um, they don't really connect unless you know, oh, there's that one date that means that one thing. So maybe we'll get some Ponyo details. I don't know. Hmm. Um, also this week, News we want to cover. Um, the official Twitter for the Odd Taxi series announced this week a new project titled Root or Route of Odd Taxi. Uh, launched a manga from the creators of the original manga starring these two new characters who appear to be human, which yeah. is weird given Odd Taxi. Um, we were saying before, need to finish this. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Um, um, wow. Oh, actually, before we get to that one, um, Bandai and Akita Shoden are branching into webtoons, uh, the vertical scrolling comics that you may have seen oh, okay. yeah, yeah. online. It seems to be the new frontier these days. Uh, but Bandai and Akita Shoden want a piece of the action. New joint business venture called uh, Bandana Comic Manga Service uh, set to launch towards the end of this year, so a ways away. Trying to get, uh, create a new IP that will fuse manga and the animation and keep creators in an active role. Good luck. Um, and then Akita Shodan announced a uh, service that's called J-Tune, which will launch um, in two days. Oh. So, hope that works. Um, Umumusume is getting another cute spin-off manga. Um, Umumusume Pretty Derby Uma Musumeshi, with meshi being the casual word for meal. So... Looks like um, pretty derby cooking. <laughs> and I'm assuming for every eating... lap they run around, they have to come up with a savory yet sweet <laughs> meal. Is that carrot cake? That, yeah, it is. <laughs> with, with a carrot chunk. Exactly. <laughs> it's weird. It looks like chocolate waffles. It does. At first, I okay. thought it was like a sweet, but then, you know, there's I, just I, the, 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 the I, dagger no. of carrot sticking out of it. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, or is it like meatloaf? I don't know. I just don't know. The carrot, no matter what it is, the carrot's going to throw it off. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I'm <laughs> not looking forward to that one. Um, particular meal there, but who knows? Maybe it's delicious. Um, the announcement says, look forward to the girl's delicious dish. Mm. Okay. Um, what if you old? Uh, no. Well, but, but you're going to make me feel. Yeah, feel. sorry. Zoid's Twitter uh -huh. posted a 40th anniversary teaser. Oh, <laughs> with a possible return of the original show, um, it featured a video with footage of the main oh, character from Zoid's Chaotic Century from 1999 with text reading, He's coming back. At last, the promise has been made. Oh. <laughs> oh. WUDC channel 20 at now 3 30 p.m. To I be think. clear, the oh. Zoids franchise is 40 years old. The anime is getting only like 20, 20 yeah. like five years old. Um only so, 25. Come on. <laughs> it's not that far back, but yeah, it's been a while. Um yeah, I've I I I'm depressed now. 
But I know there, there's moments when like something like this will come up and I'll just be like, that was yesterday. No, no, <laughs> no, please. No. It was just like on, on YouTube. They, they're playing. Uh, and this year, these songs are going to be 30 years old. Oh, no. God, I hate you people. I, I can't stand the, you know, um, this thing is now older than that thing was in like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. No. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh. Isn't it enough that my body hurts? Come on. <laughs> uh, um, well, good news for fans of Okoro Shinkai. Um, while Suzume no Tojimari followed heroine Suzume on her journey across Japan, um, it is now announced a special behind-the-scenes exhibition that will make its own journey around the country. Um, special exhibits, production materials, original key animation, storyboards, backgrounds, etc., uh, going from Tokyo through to Sapporo, Osaka, Kandasawa, and Fukuoka. That is just a beautiful picture. It I mean, is. That is just, but, and it just screams Shinkai, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, Man. guess who the director of this is? You, you, know. you say this, this is almost like a montage of just, or a, a, not a montage, a, a collage of like right. every every uh, Shinkai movie. Just, just all in one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, speaking of collages of a lot of things all at once, must cover it. This week brings us some mm. very sad news. Uh, legendary manga creator, illustrator, and designer Leiji Masamoto has passed away at the age of 85. He debuted way back in 1953 and has created and contributed to a number of manga series, best known for Galaxy Express 999 or Three Nines. Space Pirate Captain Harlock, and of course, his work on Space Battleship Yamato, Yamato and its yeah. ensuing franchise. Also created, of course, Interstellar 5555 yep. with Daft Punk. Um, his creations and his wide-ranging mechanical and vehicle designs have influenced creators and artists around the world, including many other famous manga and anime creators. Indeed. Rest in peace. Steve, yes. which of Matsumoto's works has kind of spoken to you the most would you say which is the one that kind of uh hits you the hardest well you know it's kind of funny it's, it's like i know we talked about this a long time ago mm. uh, a long time ago being like a couple of years ago <laughs> um that you know uh spaceship yamato uh yamato um was the first lazy thing that mm. i had ever seen but of course i was like five <laughs> and you know didn't really understand it but it just looked really freaking cool and it came mm. under the name of star blazers because that's what you know yeah one appealing to american kids um i would have to say the one that that really i think the one that i come back to the most mm. is interstellar ah. five, 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 just because i really do enjoy daft punk sure and when i first came across the, the you know i came across it in clips actually it was um tsunami mm. when tsunami put on amvs but they only put it had they only had a selection of like five AMVs that they kept rotating, mm. and one of them was um, was um, shoot, harder, faster, stronger. Is that it? No. One more time. One more time. That's it. One more yeah. time, and um, uh, that get you know coming on. I was just like going, oh, this is really neat A and B, and then only to realize going, no, that's Leiji Moto. Uh, <laughs> No, wait a minute. That's an actual thing. And then I got to see it, mm -hmm. and I was just like, mm -hmm. "I love that fucking, I love that. Oh my god, that's so cool." <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's that's the thing that I always come back to. I, you know, it, it, oddly enough, I don't own the DVD for this, but I mm -hmm. own, of course, the music. And you know, whenever it pops up, I always mm -hmm. have to stop for a moment and go, "I like this. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is nice." Absolutely. How about you? Um, for me, it's probably a Space Pirate Captain Harlock. Uh, um, something about just the fiercely independent hero, um, especially in a time when Japan was not fiercely independent. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Bless you again. Okay. Thank you. Um, but that, I mean, that, that very sort of countercultural message that you should be your own person, you should go off and, you know, reject society. It's something that we hear a lot over here in the West, but it's certainly not a common thing in Japan. Right. Um, and to be spoken of so strongly and firmly by Matsumoto. And I think it's kind of the general romance of the sort of rocket ships and laser guns world of Harlock. Uh, I think he yeah. captured captured really well. And then, of course, the anime series was just 
um, kept introducing twists and turns and a really unique um, enemy. Um, and it was just, uh, it was it was a ride in the best sense. Yeah. And so I think, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, there, was, there was a lot to <clears throat> the anime series and the manga. Yeah, the um, I, I keep thinking of like early on when people talk about you know anime, just anime in general. Mm. And I used to have way back in the day in Geo Yahoo Geo Cities, uh, had a webpage where I talked called Anime Behind the Big Eyes, mm. and because that's what people thought of as anime. But what's yeah. interesting is that when you actually talk to people at a, of a certain age and older. When they when they think of of anime, what style do they think of? They think of Masamoto, because yeah. that's because you know it's just like prevalent just about everywhere mm-hmm. for that time period for what he was doing and everything. And so it was definitely distinctive, and people would just be you know automatically associate associate mm-hmm. that with anime. And it was just such a you know such a like stamp of a time period yeah where you know like when you go to a convention or something and someone goes lazy who's what's lazy verse what the hell is this <laughs> and you walk in and they show the anime and they're like i know this style mm-hmm. you know i know this <laughs> everybody knows this mm-hmm. you know kind of thing. so it's just kind of impressive how like you can have that kind of impact on an entire industry where like yeah. even a noob can walk in and go oh yeah that yeah, I mean, you think, you know, within what five years he was responsible for three major anime series, uh, yeah. you know, Yamato, Harlock, and Galaxy Express. Like, that's a yeah, that's a legacy in and of itself, much less everything else. Yeah, gosh, uh, and it's also just cool having somebody who made such a vast, you know, range of work. Um, mm-hmm. All kind of connected in the lazy verse, but who has so many different things you can then adapt into anime, you can then readapt in different ways. Um, right. It definitely feels like, you know, his legacy is not only kind of the things he made, but also the fact that you can you can come back to this well over and over yeah. um, and rethink it. Like the the uh, Harlock CGI film from from yes. a while back. Like that's a really cool adaptation, and it's not much like the TV series, right. you know. And you can you can just really Bring it back for every new generation. Yeah. Well, I mean, how many Yamatos have we had? Both yeah, no kidding. In anime. I mean, I'm just a good lord. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, this is, and you know, this is he's one of those guys where you're just kind of like, you know, when when I got the news, I you know heard the news or read it on my phone actually. Yeah. I you know it's just you take a moment because you're just like, no, he can't mm-hmm. die. He's got yeah. more to do. This is this, he's like Osama Tezuka, you know. There's just yeah, you know, there's there's more to be done. I know that he probably mm-hmm. had probably in his fantastical brain of his probably had probably had on on his deathbed really going, but I've got like twenty five more <laughs> ideas. Just give me a little bit more time, you know. Just just mm-hmm. let me get this out. Let, let me just get pen to paper. That yeah, was, no kidding. Um, yeah, very very sad. Um, yeah. Just pulling up. Um, members of the anime and manga industries have been paying tribute. Um, there is a, uh, a lovely illustration by Yasuhiro Naitao of Maytel. Um, uh, Dra Maytel, um, let's see here. Um, uh, his wife left, left a message as well. Um, the original actress of Tetsuro Hoshino oh, also wow. left a comment. Um, Oh, uh, Hiratoshi Sano of Double Eighty Three and Razafon yeah. drew an illustration of uh, Harlock and other characters. Um, uh, others, Zach Davison, translator, Discotech Media, a um, bunch of other other folks. Um, oh, it's nice. Uh, uh, Ami Shibata, manga creator of Papua, and uh-huh. uh, um, he uh, he received a letter from uh, Matsumoto, uh, oh. a long letter full of, as he pulls it, sternness, kindness, and a lot of heart. And he posts it, uh, and sorry, she, uh, she, she posted it uh, online, uh, uh, sort of inspiring folks to, to draw manga. Very cool. Nice. Um, there's a... a uh, so there's a little sad. Um, Nozomu Tamaki, creator of Dance the Vampire Bond, wrote, 
Mm-hmm. I've only met Leiji Matsumoto once. I was when I interviewed about him about a Space Fighter of Yamato PlayStation game. After a lively discussion about a wide range of topics, he asked me on the way home, what kind of manga are you drawing? At the time, I was barely eking out a living with an adult magazine. <laughs> Sheepishly, I told him the gist of it. In response, he said, that's fine, isn't it? Draw that kind of thing while you can. Before long, you'll be able to draw it even when you want to. Um, um, I asked, when you say not being able to draw it, are you talking about age? To which he grinned in response and said, you'll get teased by children in school. <laughs> um, he was probably recalling his own experiences drawing his uh, his own early etchy manga. Um, he said there was a moment that stood out to me even more than the interview. Just, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, he, he was a uh, big man. Yes. Yeah. Very sad. Well, that's all the news for this week. Thank you all for watching. See you next week. Have a good one, all. Cheers to Papa.